Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with another Hearts of Djibouti video. That's right, we're creeping on, oh, like number eight, I think, it's something like that. Pretty sure it's number eight. Uh, no, number nine. I believe it's number nine. Don't quote me on these things because I'm horrible at them. So, anywho, some things have occurred since the last time we played. Um, we've, we've created some more dudes. Uh, as you can see, we have the new, the new roller divisions. Uh, yes, that's right, the illustrious roller divisions, um, which are made up of, we should probably take a look, see, uh, which is another roller, these are pretty much the, uh, the pure manifestation of our most beautiful of roller coasters, and basically what I've been doing, uh, is trying to get rid of the artillery in them, and I finally actually got to that point so I could get the speed up, uh, and make them a little bit more effective, in the overall combat situations and to have a little bit less manpower oh so something else that I've done at this point in time with um, the game is I did go ahead and download the Corian States mod I have not played ahead at all since really uh, well for the most part I haven't really played ahead aside from making a few adjustments here or there uh, to that type stuff but Essentially, now we have the Corian States mod active, and that is going to be something we use for the future. Because I don't care what anyone says, it makes no sense to have a population of 700 million and only be able to utilize, let's see, a total of 600,000 of that population. Now, I would prefer if the mod would come with some sort of, instead of full-blown coring them, maybe have some sort of penalty where you still can only use 50% of uh, the what a normal cord uh, population would be. So, for example, for me, I believe it would make a lot of sense of being Djibouti uh, and having a population, or I'm, I'm utilizing 4% of extensive conscription, right? Well, I believe it would make more sense to be I can only utilize 2% of non-original cord uh, areas, which to me makes total sense. So, but anywho, no big deal. I just don't think I should have to scrape the barrel just to get like, that's because it's not scraping the barrel. Like, I mean, yeah, sure, it's scraping the barrel of Djibouti, but I don't see why my entire nation should be affected by such weak conscription laws when truly there should be some sort of implementation in the game that reflects for more complicated uh, laws. Uh, being able to increase, for example, looking here, the eligible non-core population, take it from one... 0.107%, maybe I want to bring it up to 0.2%. Like, honestly, if I could bring it up to 0.2%, we would literally double. We would have so many more people we could use. So, but anyway, I could go on. The, 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 the subject in particular honestly bothers me. I don't like the limitations on it. So, we're pretty much just going to incorporate the majority of these places into the actual Djibouti, and then we'll be able to actually have a serious... Uh, explosion of manpower so we're basically going to be able to recruit all the troops we want and have big massive armies which can actually allow us to take on forces like NATO or uh, even China speaking of which how's their world going doesn't look like it's going too well for China but they're not necessarily losing that badly they just lost a little bit of territory in Japan and uh well, but they have gained a little bit of territory uh, right here, as we can see. So that's interesting. Uh, or Tibet. I said Japan. I meant Tibet. Sorry. Go ahead as, as take this as a warning from me. I make a lot of mistakes because my mind is in multiple places at once. So just go ahead and mentally prepare yourself that if you're watching Commissar Bro, he's going to say stupid shit at some point during his videos. So, with that particular thing out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about what we should do next. I'm actually thinking Saudi Arabia has, you know, kind of uh, gone further than they probably should. I believe personally that it is just about Saudi Arabia's time to kick the bucket. Yes, we need to integrate Tanzania as soon as possible. We're actually going to create a new general for this. Uh, Alex Taylor, that's right. Alex Taylor is going to be the new general 
uh, of this new army that is pretty much going to squad up here in Yemen and uh, get transported over on boats and uh, they're, they're going to hang out here in Yemen uh, and yes yeah, just man up on the border because again I'm thinking that Saudi Arabia Oh man, Saudi on my old Saudi boy. Yes, it's about that time, don't you think? We're gonna start justifying against Saudi Arabia. Now, the one concern that could occur uh, by pissing off the bull over there in Saudi Arabia is it could lead to our destruction. So maybe, honestly, you know, trying to invite them into our faction would be a good idea. But they're oh no, they they have a neutral foreign policy, so. That's not going to work. They're not getting involved at all in any wars. But taking over that territory is kind of important for us to be able to reach Kuwait. So going to war with Saudi Arabia is kind of beneficial for us. Um, now, we need to be careful because at that point, we have American Iraq. And uh, basically, let's just take a look at the factions map mode one more time. We can see that we're starting to creep into NATO territory. Ah, yes. Yes, they have become incorporated. Prison breaks, start a man. We need to reform our prison system. Yes, let's reform the prisons of Djibouti. They clearly need to be given more sugar to really put them in those sugar comas to deal with all these stupid problems that keep arising from prison breaks and such. That's right. Honestly, I want my prisoners constantly in a state of joy so they never even understand of how serious they're situation. I don't know, something stupid like that. Yes, fuck them. <laughs> Let's just screw those guys over. All right, what's uh, what's my situation here? Okay, so our army is looking pretty good. The Saudi Arabians, I don't believe have the manpower necessary to fight against us. I do think we're going to have to call Djibouti Yemen into uh, this particular fight even though I don't want to. Um but we probably will. Oh, there we go. Look, Gen 3 UCAV. Oh, my. What about Gen 3.5? Let's get some of those. Mm, wonderful. All right, so what else do we need to do? Oh, well, we're getting a butt ton of factories. I don't, I don't really need all them factories, though. Oh, by the way, so something else I was doing that I kind of didn't show you guys because I didn't think it was really all that important. Uh, speaking of which, we 2019 now is uh, I was pro improving infrastructure. So Djibouti now pretty much has some of the most advanced infrastructure in the entire world, if not the most advanced uh, for such a massive country, an absolutely massive country with pretty much perfect infrastructure levels. Um, so that's something uh, to keep in mind, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, and now I'm kind of just, you know, like adding stuff here or there, you know, just some uh, some radar radar towers and stuff. That's kind of cool. What kind of resources do we need? Uh, we need oil, as per usual. We need rubber, as per usual. So and what? Huh? What? 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 What happened? Huh? Well, that is a. That is a very, very interesting state of affairs. It looks like the Republic of China, being Taiwan, and Macau have defeated Japan. That's uh, unexpected, to say the least. Yeah, that's, uh, that's particularly unexpected. So the Republic of China is actually really powerful now. Hmm. So, anywho, let's go back over here and look at Djibouti and look at things that are not crazy. You know, just a tiny little African nation basically becoming one of the most powerful nations in the entire world. That's not crazy. That's, that's far less crazy than what's going on over there. I mean, there's Republic of Taiwan. Oh, my God. They're pretty much doing what we're doing. They did what we did, except they took Japan. How do they do that? They must have been backed up by the allies. Who are, who, who are you working for? Who are you? Who, the AEDU? Oh, wait, what? Wait, what? The, wait, 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 wait. I'm confused. So you're saying that China and the Republic of China worked together to bring down Japan. Let me, let me, let me say that one more time. The Republic of China and China just worked together 
That's the part that's fucked up. They worked together. My mind has been blown. I don't even know how to handle this. Jesus. And then, and then more importantly, Macau. It's an effing city, man. It's it's just a city. Like it, 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 and they took over the other half of Japan. Wait, what's going on now? They're, they're, are they carving up pieces of China? Or Japan? So apparently Japan has now been split into three districts between Macau, the Republic of China, and China herself. Interesting. I don't want to piss them off, man. I don't, I don't, really, I don't want to get on their bad side at all. I didn't think Japan was going to be defeated so easily either. That's uh, kind of interesting. So that means India now stands alone against the great Chinese beast. I wonder how they're really going to carry about their future plans and so on and so forth. I imagine they don't really want to go to war with them. Or, well, they don't want to get taken over by them anyway. So that's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens. So, how much longer do we have until we justify? Well, we got 100 more days. 97 specifically. Um, so what can we do in the meantime? Well, uh, I mean, we can talk. We can sit here and kind of get to know each other a bit better. Uh, maybe I can take you out for a beautiful dinner uh, for two. Just uh, me and you. And uh, we can fall in love in the middle of the night. You know, something like that going on between us. Because I hear you have the most beautiful of eyes. And, uh, you know, that type of stuff. So, I mean, if you want to make this happen, baby, swear we can make this happen. We'll go out right now. And as we sit here and constantly integrate our states. See, like, right now, honestly, I'm actually content with just that manpower. I can make 700,000 soldiers work. Like, <laughs> so I'm... I am like a million times happier now uh, that we even have that level of stuff going on, so that's better. Um, should we build a rubber factory? Probably. Let's build a rubber factory. Look, we've got 45 civilian factories. We've got 67 in all. And uh, some of our import requests are not being met by China. Like, seriously, China, are you having that much trouble bringing in the goodies to old, old Djibouti land? Like, come on, man. Like, I'm not asking for that much. I think I'm a pretty reasonable adult, a reasonable individual who uh, 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 doesn't quite ask for all that much. So, I mean, it's probably not that bad. You're probably just being dramatic. What's, uh, what's the production levels looking like? All right. Well, it looks like we're still building more than enough tanks. We're building 10 uh, APCs a day. We've got 10,000 in stockpile. We have more than enough FAMAS F2s. Uh, so that's something else. Uh, we have no national focus set. We never do. I know. We have missing stuff. We have undersigned divisions. Do we now? Who are the undersigned? Un uh, well, okay, go to him. There we go. Yeah, that fixed that problem, right? Well, no, there's more. There are more. Okay, well, uh, go to that guy. Yes, Somali has been integrated. Yes, Bring these people in as soon as possible. Look at that. See, now we are we are actually having reasonable amounts of population use. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. 800,000 for 700 million is more, much more the level I'm looking at. And, okay, apparently there's a lot of un unassigned divisions. All right, well, you guys are going to be assigned to them. But you got to get over there. But you got to go here first. I really wish they had an easier way of doing, like, the naval transportation and whatnot because i believe it's something that could be done a lot easier and they just they made it kind of complicated because you have to have them on a naval base rather than just automatic hot pathing uh where they can pretty much put one and one together and figure it out for themselves but apparently they're not going to do that and instead they're just going to make a controller which again is not that big of a deal i'm just complaining for the sake of complaining all right, so we're going to put these roller divisions over here. Uh, speaking of which, I actually want to adjust these roller divisions. Uh, I want them to be more effective in their soft attack. But I haven't quite come up with a way to do that yet. So maybe just add more mechanized infantry. Um, okay, we'll check out cyber forces. Or it makes organization actually go up. So that's not a bad idea. I kind of want to swap out these motorized trucks for additional... Uh, mechanized infantry yeah well i mean this it doesn't hurt it it makes them heavier makes them use more supplies but overall they still go up in effects uh we use less motorized but we use more infantry equipment and we use more mechanized so yeah that's fine we'll do that but ultimately 
we're moving at good speeds and whatnot. I might actually make like combined arm divisions where essentially they have tanks in them as well. Um, adding in tanks has always been an incredibly effective uh, plan, I believe, for our things. And we're actually going to add a couple more units to that. Add a couple more units to the to the infantry brigades. That's right. These are uh, a sweet, delicious elephant. We're going to call these guys the elephant ears. That's right. The elephant ear brigades. I'm going to rename them. <laughs> Let's just name it that. The... Oh, no. These are the tilt a whirls the tilt a whirl that's right because they they shake and bake the enemy and the enemy just doesn't understand like what is life anymore what is this well brigades brigade there we go rename boom oh yeah my tilt a whirls wonderful absolutely wonderful all right so let's go back to technology um i think it's about that time to get light can i not get this yet Correct. Cased telescope small arms. Uh, so I have to research that first to be able to get apparently a carbine that existed well before. Well, let me look at that again. What was that? What was it M4 carbine? Yeah, like <laughs> it's interesting that these guns are like, oh, yeah, this is technology from 2030. It's like, really? That's interesting because they've been using an M4 carbine for quite a few years now. <laughs> That's not really new technology, but hey, whatever you want to say it is. All right, we have two additional tank brigades uh, coming up in Djibouti. Again, we're going to send them to Saudi Arabia. Uh, these units are being affected by attrition, which is no bueno. So we're going to put them over here and move like one of them out. Okay, well, they're still being affected by attrition. Actually, my troops in general are being affected by attrition. So that's something we got to be careful with. We don't want to have too much attrition. Actually, I'm going to leave these tanks here in uh, Djibouti itself because we don't really have any border patrols right now. So should the African Federation go to war with us, we could be in a very sticky situation. So we don't really want that to happen. Uh, we could stage a coup, a coup, but I don't know how well it would work. I wonder if you can actually start a coup in a tiny little nation like Rwanda. Probably not, because it's only got one territory. Normally, it splits the two territories up. I imagine it would just automatically fail. Hmm. I don't know. That would be an interesting thing to test out. You know what? Let's go ahead and test it out. Let's test out a a, a coup here. Yeah, a monarchist coup. We're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna see what happens. Cause I got the resources to spare. Production has never not been what we've got. You know, like we've 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 got plenty of production. Also, our missile cruiser is almost finished, and I am so excited. To finish the missile cruiser it will be finished and one well we're building 1.59 of them a year i wonder where it's going to be put i imagine in the great port de Djibouti. maybe possibly hopefully i actually want to expand the naval base capabilities we don't have any uh big naval bases in the the actual main area of Djibouti. there all right so we have completed our justification of war against Saudi arabia and now there's a couple of things that could happen here, so I'm going to go ahead and save it. Because again, I don't want my game to end here because I make a stupid mistake. So we're going to save it. And we are going to declare war on Saudi Arabia. Um, and here we go. Djibouti goes to war. Heaven help us all. And then our forces are going to push against the great Saudi Arabian divide. Actually, I, I assume they would attack us first, but they didn't. Look at that. They're not attacking us at all. Because they know. They know. That is no bueno. Actually, can I not attack there? Oh, right. Because my ally is not in the war. So, the Kingdom of Yemen wants to join. We're going to let them. We're going to bring them into the fight. And there we go. <laughs> now we're fighting. We're really getting stomping now, boys. Get in there. Smash them up. And what else do we want to do? Gen 6. Actually, I kind of want to do so. Well, I've already got all support battalions. I've already pretty much gotten all the tanks. Uh, I could get a better infantry fighting vehicle. Oh, my. Or is there any... Yeah, really the airplanes. I guess we need to upgrade the most. No, we got all that. Actually, do we still have our newest land doctrine? No, we don't. But see, we don't even need this anymore. Because now we've got the Coin States mod. So we've got a population to work with. Um, You attack there. Oh, yeah. Smack him up. Just smack him right in the face. You know, I actually really hope that, like, the forces of NATO are not this easy. 
Because, like, right now, all the enemies we've been steamrolling over are super easy to beat. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this, yeah, we want it to turn purple. That's right. I didn't think about that. You wait there. You wait there. And, yeah, you guys attack from the three prongs. You wait there. You wait there. I don't want all this land occupation to be to Yemen, who ain't doing nothing. This is all about Djiboutis. Plus, I want Saudi Arabia for myself. But then again, I could just ask for the territory back later. Because, you know, they're my puppet, after all. They have no real say here. Yeah, because it's just going to be incorporated into their stuff anyway. Oh, wow, look, we actually lost a fight. That's something you don't see very often. Attack. <laughs> all right. And we integrated, so we got a huge bonus to the population. We've got Missile Cruiser 5. Um, actually, that's something we do need to upgrade is boats. Like, we really don't have many good boats. I'm kind of behind on that. Increasing naval invasion capacity. Outdated equipment and production. All right, well, it will get fixed here soon enough. I'm just not really in a rush to fix that. That's not something that's, like, clamoring to be fixed at the moment or to be updated. All right, push right in. Oh, oh, they're holding fine. I actually want to look at the values. So it looks like our roller divisions are on low supply. Honestly, our roller divisions don't have high attack values at all, um, it seems. Uh, yeah, three of five enemy divisions can pierce their armor. That's no bueno. So let's stop that attack. Uh, let's get these boys to be attacking right there. Yeah, push right into them. Smash them, boys. Smash them up. Did I tell him? There we go. Alright. Dude, like, honestly, supply problems is going to be what kills Saudi Arabia. Because, like, look at this. They can't... <laughs> this is their country, and the attrition is so bad, they can barely hold me back. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Did that thing finish? It'll be done on the 20th of June. And we'll finally have built our first boat. The Pearl de Djibouti. Oh, man, I am just so excited. Because, like, we've never had a boat before in Sweet Djibouti. So taking a look at the actual battlefield and how things are occurring, we're pretty much stomping Saudi Arabia into the dirt. We have captured their capital. Um, the war is not going in their favor. We've only lost about 1.65 thousand men at the cost of 87 thousand, uh, or 90 thousand now, 90 thousand Saudis. So they're trying really hard to hold us back, and they are failing because they are not. They're just not up to up to fight uh, these these types of armies. Cause like, look at my breakthrough values and whatnot. <laughs> like the the values of our tanks, because they're so advanced and powerful, they just can't stop the Sandland Liberators. And this is why they're called the Sandland Liberators. They were made for the express purpose of uniting the Middle East under Djiboutian rule, baby. That's right. Oh yeah. And you're not stopping me now. Actually, we need to go in there to help those tanks. Because they, yeah, they kind of got caught off guard. Eh, we should probably not be too aggressive. There's no reason to throw away tank lives. Because like we've like tripled our losses just because of the over-aggression we are displaying against our enemies. But Saudi Arabia at this point has pretty much almost fallen. However, the supply lines are particularly bad in this country. Uh, which is crazy because you think with all that oil money, maybe they'd have some decent supply lines, but apparently not. They don't know what decent supply lines are. So we're going to have to just deal with that as we go and cut those off. Cut that. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. 18 divisions completely smashed into non-existence. Oh, man, that was hunt like look at that those casualties are insane and finally we have reached the borders of kuwait and once we bring this great country down kuwait city is going to be in some serious effing trouble um all we have to do is take control of kuwait and saudi arabia uh, saudi arabia and we are going to be in a really really good place but, again, I hope that they don't start pushing that. Well, I don't think they can because this is Saudi Arabian territory. And I don't think they can actually attack me while I'm attacking through here. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they can and I'm just stupid. <laughs> Either which way, it would have been in Saudi Arabia's best interest to actually join a faction. 
uh, especially the uh, what CSG or the CSGT or TO CSTO, whatever the hell their name was. Probably should have joined them and got some assistance from them because at this point in time, eh, it's not. It's, eh, they need help. They need a lot of help. So who has done the majority of the work? This is literally no surprising to me at all. This is no surprising. <laughs> Look, Djibouti Yemen's only lost 270 men. We've lost 10,000. And I guarantee most of it is just bad supply. Because just this, the supply here is just terrible. Like, what are you supposed to even do with all this crappy supply, man? My attrition levels are just ridiculously high. That does not make me happy at all. But it's just something I guess I'm going to have to deal with. Um, let's see. Let's go to construction. How's construction? Look, okay, well, I have a lot of construction stuff. Oh, my God. Eh, eh, what's going on in Ethiopia? Why are they bomb? They must be bombing us. Because, like, look, we have all this destroyed stuff. Yeah, there has to be. There has to be, like, bombing runs they've been doing on us. Well, that's not, that's not bad at all. That was actually pretty smart of them. I didn't realize they were doing that. That's what I get for not paying attention, man. Like, half the time, shit happens to me because I'm just not paying attention to see if it's actually occurring or not. Uh, the Saudis are actually doing a pretty good job of holding us back now. Our casualties have started to go up uh, marketedly. Like, you can you can literally tell we've actually lost a whole division uh, due to casualties. Uh, they're getting smarter about how they're holding back. And also, their attrition uh, is not as bad as it was before. Plus, this, this, this place is like a barren wasteland to fight in. So, it's not exactly very promoting of us to be here in the first place. Oh, my God. How are we losing that fight? Let me look at it. Let me actually take a look. See, well, it looks like they're pretty entrenched. Our infantry brigades and our armor brigades have really high attack values. I honestly don't know how we're losing that because it looks like we should be winning it, right? If I'm not mistaken, maybe it was just our low organization. Eventually, we're just going to lose because of that. Uh, we are attacking from multiple directions. I don't understand. I, I don't understand how we're losing this battle. It looks like we should be winning it. By all rights, man. By all rights. All right. Integrating more states into the cores. Uh, what's our production looking like? Well, we're producing what we normally need to be produced. I need to upgrade this with Missile Cruiser 5. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Missile Cruiser 5. That makes me happy to have such a beautiful beast. Actually, you know what? I want to go look at our boat. Is it here? Is, is it put into the Port de Djibouti? Is it not? Okay, I guess it's not. Where's my boat? <laughs> Where be my boat here? All right. Djibouti fleet. It's in the Congo. What? How is it in the Congo? Oh, I've actually built three missile cruisers. That's interesting. Oh, here it is. Here's our boats. Yes, we have three boats. That's right. Let's get us a new commander. Johans Taylor. Hello, Mr. Johans. Ah, it is good to have a boat that we can do things with. It's cool now. Yes. All right. So how are our casualties looking? Not so great. We kind of need some reinforcements. Need to bring some men up to the front because we're kind of losing a lot of guys now. Uh, we've actually lost 20,000 more just in the past couple of days. Uh, now, again, the Saudis are pretty much on their last leg at this point. Uh, they are 96% of the, or 94% of the way to capitulation. Uh, so hopefully our casualties don't continue to rise like they've been. We just need to push in uh, in several key areas. And we should be good to go. Actually, we need to take that. Like, why is no one jumping on that? <laughs> all, honestly, all, I think all we need to do is take that territory right there. Uh, take the city Al Jaff. And uh, we should be... We should win. The war should be over between us and the Saudis. And uh, that's how the cookie will crumble. Where are all my tanks? Are they literally all dead? I guess they're all dead. That's no bueno at all. <laughs> Uh, you can't get a good tank, I suppose. Alright, and Saudi Arabia's still fighting against us. They're putting up a... At least they're putting up a decent fight. This is probably a better fight. It seems like the fights tend to get a little better each time. So, you know, that's something I'm actually happy about. I'm happy that some of the nations are not complete pushovers, even though most of them are complete pushovers. Um, and I mean, I mean, honestly, these 30,000 lost values compared to... You know, basically a 1 to 10 kill ratio is kind of insane if you think about it. Like, I mean, that's ridiculous that we're putting that kind of beating down on them. But, hey, I'm not complaining. And we need to take that. Yeah, we need to take out this airfield to make sure that no more airplanes are coming in on us. Um, they have radar stations here. We need to take those. And we just cut off 
those five guys. This has so this this airfield has so many airplanes. Look at that. Twelve had they had twelve hundred airplanes there, now only six hundred. And boom, there's the war. That is the war. Now we could puppet Saudi Arabia, uh, which would be kind of a smart idea, but at the same time, Saudi Arabia has so many resources that we just need to take it over. But then I don't know. Yeah, you know what? We're just we're gonna take it. This is gonna be like one of the last countries that we literally full on just take for ourselves. Uh, because we need that territory. All right, so now that we've done that, we've actually lost quite a few divisions. We lost quite a few dudes. Uh, we are going to set up a front line between us and Kuwait. And we are going to be prepared for that. I kind of feel like I should have given Djibouti Yemen something. They did such a good job, and I'm just so proud of them uh, for fighting alongside us. Uh, maybe when we take Oman, I'll actually give them Oman. Because they did such a wonderful job fighting alongside of us, us and actually occupying territories and so on. Where they didn't have to, necessarily, you know. So I'm proud of them. I'm so proud of them. They were just being such good little puppets. Alright. And so it looks like the Kuwaitis have been waiting their whole lives for this moment. And are now proceeding to kick our shit in. <laughs> like, they're not giving this up without a fight. So that's something interesting that's occurring. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and research this high-end technology. Uh, I don't care about boats right now, to be honest. Um, let's see. Yeah, because this is gonna be this is gonna be problematic for us uh, because the Kuwaitis have a huge army that they've been kept they've kept bottled up in Kuwait itself, uh, and as you can see right now, they are using uh, speed to their advantage and are very quickly moving against us. Um, we might actually just have to do what the Saudis were pretty much doing against us. Like, cause we might, we might lose a lot of dudes fighting here right now like that. So that's not good. Um, we need to stand ground at some point, some areas and be able to be able to hold them off. We, really what we need to happen is because they have such a large army it's it's going to get wh whittled down by attrition and defensive warfare anyway so basically uh yeah and see the ai is kind of doing exactly what i want them to do for the most part except for this they're failing in this which is surprising to me we should be winning this yeah there we go all right that's better so basically all i want to do is come around the kuwaitis and like yeah just kind of catch them by surprise because they're being so aggressive they've let literally left their capital open they thought that if they push hard enough into saudi arabia they could win the war there but oh fuck no they didn't oh fuck no they didn't oh fuck <laughs> i just didn't have visual on it oh i'm such a moron oh man that is not good at all well this is interesting all right well the kuwaitis are still putting up a big fight we've actually lost more here in the fight against the kuwaitis than we've actually lost in a long time uh, but you know, Kuwait is no, they're no fool. They're, they're, they're putting up a good fight. That's interesting. Um, yeah, push back up against that. Now that we just beat them in that territory, we'll take that territory over and they're going to, if they want to continually put more troops on the border, they can, but that might not be the best for them. Oh my God. They are putting some serious firepower down on me. <laughs> they're like, we are going to beat you into the dirt. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you're not. But we can't afford to lose those naval bases. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to transport troops over the rivers or over the river. We're not going to be able to come over the Gulf anymore. Uh, so that's not going to be good. Um, let's see. Let us see. Let us see. Uh, yeah, and they took all those fortifications. That's okay. As long as Djibouti, Yemen doesn't get taken over, I don't really care. Like, we're ultimately going to win this fight. I'm really not concerned. They can spread their troops out as much as they want, but ultimately it's not going to be good for them. Uh, and if anything, they should want to keep them consolidated in specific areas and play more defensively against me. But at the same time, they probably don't have the time to do that. Attack, 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 attack. What's their breakthrough values? Uh, their Marine. Oh, these are Marine Brigade. Why do they have a tank symbol then? That's so misleading. All right. Um... Yeah, we're just going to push up, push them right back out of that territory. Take it right on back. Take it right back, boys. That's what I'm talking about for Sweet Djibouti. 
The Kuwaitis thought that they weren't going to get that sexy, smexy roller coaster ride, but they were wrong. They were wrong because they're going to get it and they don't like it. They're going to learn that the only religion in this world is that which offers you sweet, voluptuous corn dogs. Mm, that's right. I want a corn dog now. A corn dog would be great. Hey, look, these dudes are still winning, fighting up against the Kuwaitis. How many dudes have we lost now? I can't wait to actually win this war against all these all these countries that have been fighting me for so long. Uh, so we're up to 132. They're up to 3.24. So the Kuwaitis have lost 136,000 troops uh, fighting over the past couple of months uh, fighting here in Saudi Arabia, which is bad for them, good for us. We're still kind of kicking their teeth in. We're like basically now that uh, it's been established, we keep taking the territories and losing them, but. We're doing, we've done enough damage to where they're not fully organized, massively powerful armies anymore. So now we pretty much just have to take these territories back that they took from us and constantly fight in defensive battles to beat our opponents. Because, I mean, they're, we're, we're, we're pushing them back. And if honestly, if we can cut off a majority of their troops, like right here, um, we're well, not a majority, but still, that's a good number of troops. Probably half of their army getting cut off. Uh, that's going to be incredibly beneficial to us because then at that point they're going to have to make some sort of strike to uh, free up those those troops and bring them back into the fray, uh, which is looking like it's not going to happen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're pushing deeper. So yeah, now we def we got them on the ropes for sure. Oh man, that is that is tens of thousands of troops that are literally getting surrounded in an instant oh man that really oh there we go oh that is exactly what i'm talking about all right so outdated what are we producing that's outdated oh yeah these fighters all right that's a modern gen 5 yeah so we want the future gen 5 we want the gen 5 bomber yep gen 5 bomber um, and actually, you know what? I want to start making more airplanes too on a modern Gen 5 or Gen 4 attack. We're going to start making those. I want to start making modern Gen 5 MPAs as well. Whoopsie daisies. Yes, modern Gen 5 APAs. We're going to put that up, put that up, put that up, put that up. All right. So, anyway, so the Kuwaitis at this point in time are really on the back, they're on the back foot. We've taken a lot of casualties fighting against them, but now their casualties are about what they normally are. They've lost half of their army, minimum, at least half of their army fighting against us. And actually, no, they've lost more than that because, look, they've only got 10 divisions left uh, in their entire army. So basically, the fight is over for Kuwait. They pushed in and probably made the largest gains that any country has made against us in a fight ever. They put up a damn good fight, but uh, now all we need to do is just march on Kuwait City. Well, whoo, they're not going to give that up. That fight. Oh, man. Jeez, they just, the supply lines in this country are god awful. This is why I had to take it over. Like, this is unacceptable. We need to fix this. Jesus, so I can actually do something. And, uh, yeah, get some better supply lines. All right. This is so bad. This attrition is just so bad. Like, we've, like, honestly, most of these casualties are probably attrition. One day, I actually hope that they add in, um, like, value systems where you can actually keep track of what units are lost and how they were lost. Were they lost to fighting? Were they lost to attrition? You know, because that seems like information that would be incredibly interesting to know uh, for me. Initial, we need rubber. Do we seriously need rubber? Rub, rub, blah, 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 blah. I can't even speak. Do we seriously need rubber, though? I feel like at this point in time, we should have more than enough resources. Let's actually look at our resource map. Yeah, like, you, that is insane. That is just insane how much oil we are getting from this country. I'm half tempted to give... Uh, Djibouti, Yemen, like the whole bottom right of this this uh, territory, but there's a lot of resources there too, uh, so maybe not. Like this right there, specifically these two provinces, that one right there, because we're eventually going to take them over. But anyway, let's take a look, see at the fighting. All right, so the Kuwait army is down to eight divisions, heavily entrenched in Kuwait City. Um, it looks like they're not going to give up at all. 
which is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Uh, maybe we attack with our tanks? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. They took some serious casualties just now. All right. So, do we have an air base nearby? Well, we've got Aljaf. Aljaf. So, we can put some bombers in. Yeah, why not? we got a bunch of Gen 4 bombers just sitting and hanging out and doing their thing. So, we'll bring in about 500 of those bombers. Yep, we'll integrate that. All right. Infantry offensive. All right, stop happening things. All right, and we're going to bomb there. Let's see. Strategic. Yeah, they'll bomb enemy buildings, infrastructure, and industry, and so on and so forth. All right. So we also want to bring in some other things as well. What do they got? Enemy average mission efficiency. Enemy. Oh, they've actually got some fighters flying over and enemy bombers flying over right now. All right. Well, let's go ahead and deploy some more. We're going to bring in some fighters. Um... Create a new ear ring. I don't know why my, my icons are so effed up. Again, it's probably because I'm playing Millennium Dawn. So we've got a buttload of multi-role fighters. So we're going to bring those in as well. We're going to bring in a thousand of them. That's 80,000 men being brought in to man these bad boys. We're going to fly them over there. And we're going to do air superiority. Make sure we gain control of the skies because we own this and we're just going to bomb Kuwait City into non-existence. We need that country and uh and, and we need to we need to knock them out of the fight, honestly. Um large front offensive, yes. All right. I wonder if our invasion would be appropriate now. Well, we could bomb them. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't want to nuke Kuwait. I have no reason to nuke Kuwait. I'm not trying to go that hard on them. Oh, crap. A bunch of planes just got shot down. All right, so let's take a look at our losses over southern Iraq. How are we doing? Well, we've bombed 1.2. We've shot down two enemy airplanes uh, because our average planes are way better than theirs. Uh, we are pretty much flying F-35s and F-22s against their <laughs> F-16 type plane. So I think we have a little bit of an advantage on them. Uh, yeah. Okay. Planes lost. I wish it would actually tell like grand totals. That's what I want. Oh, here it is. Details. All right. So our bombers disrupted have been 1,146 of our bombers have been disrupted. Okay. Well, that's no bueno. Enemy buildings bomb. We bombed the crap out of them. We've lost 31 bombers. We've shot down four. We've lost 34, five. Oh my God. We're losing a lot of bombers. But we are bombing the crap out of their buildings. Like, their infrastructure is probably getting pulverized right now. And honestly, see, they lost a division. So they're down to six divisions. Limited strength. They're not going to be able to hold us back for much longer. Uh, so we're actually going to invade now. And that is going to be all she wrote for Kuwait. That is all she wrote. So it seems like Kuwait has finally fallen. Uh, they took a, they took 400,000 casualties. But they have been the most effective fighter against us thus far. Uh, we got a bunch of new equipment and weapons, and honestly, though, we don't need any of that. We got some AKMSs, yeah, in case we just get that desperate, we need some goddamn guns. All right, so Kuwait has fallen, and no longer do we have to worry about Kuwait uh, messing with us anymore. Their forces are gone. So what is left of the the war against South Ossetia, Central Africa, and so on? Well, most of the main powers are still are dead, but we still have Bahrain, and we still have South Ossetia. South Ossetia has literally two divisions, but there is, you know, about 30 countries between us and them. Honestly, the best way we could do it is probably navally invade Georgia and then attack them from there. Because, again, I don't know why this game doesn't have some sort of, like, look, can we just end it? Like, you lost. You clearly lost. <laughs> you have been curb stomped into the dirt. Like, you guys don't have this so but no there isn't um unfulfilled import requests well you know what that's the beautiful thing is that we don't need oil no more like there is no way i could possibly need oil at this point in time because like we are pretty much making all the oil we could possibly need but we still need rubber as per usual we need something so let's go ahead and start mining that out and we need tungsten as well 
Um, but the Chinese have plenty of tungsten, so let's do that. Get us some more tungsten, press play, boom. See, now we're only negative four. Things are looking much better in that respect. Um, and I think that is as good as a place of any to end this episode. What do you guys think? I mean, we've been going for 45 minutes now. Uh, you've seen the fall of Saudi Arabia and the fall of Kuwait. Uh, honestly, the next target is Bahrain. So that's something we need to consider doing a naval invasion of. Actually, yeah, right there. That is literally right there that we want to invade states. At least, okay, good. Yeah, more power. More power to the man. All right, and, uh, well, look. <laughs> our divisions are literally already ready to go. How much time? Oh, uh, well, we still need our navies over there to ensure that we can actually land over there. So, let's get our boats, and let's send them over here. Actually, are they already going over there? Boats. Click. Zoom back over. Click. Oh, because look, they actually have boats. Oh, no. No. Stop it. I didn't mean to tell you guys to go there. No. Oh, God. Uh, well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> For some reason, I told my dudes to go over there. Why did I do that? Well, I guess give the so the there's a blunder for the for the uh, the Djiboutian government. We kind of just made a really huge mistake and lost five convoys. So, yep, that's unpleasant. It's very unpleasant, particularly unpleasant. I like how Djibouti Yemen is still just kind of occupying our territory for us. Way to look out for a bro there, Djibouti Yemen. That's why you're going to get Oman. Literally, that is why you're getting Oman, you sweet, sexy beast. Anyway, this has been Commissar Bro. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the series as much as I'm enjoying playing it. It's a lot of fun. It's an interesting series thus far, and we seem to be kicking ass and taking names as far as I can tell. So I'm pretty ecstatic about that. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys continue to watch this with me and enjoy this with me and uh, hopefully we'll see Djibouti eventually take over the rest of the world. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? Anywho, this has been CB and I'm gonna see you beautiful bastards next time.